Hi there, welcome to A Well Purpose Woman. I'm Elizabeth and today I'm gonna show you how you can take mason jars or other jars that you use on a regular basis in your home for cooking and turn them into beautiful crafts for Christmas. All of these crafts were made from mason jars I either had on hand or that I recently used for our cooking in our home and they just turned into these beautiful high-end looking crafts that you can give as gifts for Christmas or use around your home for home decor. I hope you like this video and if it's your first time here I wouldn't mind if you hit that red subscribe button that just gives you alerts whenever new videos are available. But without further ado, let's get started on making these beautiful crafts for Christmas. If you happen to see my previous video on turning 10 tin cans into crafts for Christmas, then this project might seem somewhat familiar. We're going to actually start with a ma wide mouth mason jar and a stocking that I found at the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna transform it into a gnome. And this gnome is just going to fit right over our mason jar, kind of as a cover. So to get started, what I did is I just took my scissors and I cut my stocking into the shape of a triangle. I just cut off the one side and then I just folded the stocking over and actually used it as a guide for cutting the other side of the stocking. And this was a really easy way to give me a nice triangle that I could use for my gnome's hat. And now that I had the shape of the gnome's hat, I just turned the stocking inside out and brought it over to my machine. And I sewed a stitch to close up both sides of the triangle. So just run a stitch down each side of the triangle that you opened up by cutting. You could use a hot glue gun to do this as well. I found that a little bit more difficult and found it much easier just to run a stitch on both sides of the triangle. The next step was to turn my gnome hat right sides out and once I had done that I could start to see the shape of my gnome. He was really cute. It worked really well to do this and the last step in making a gnome was to just take a little wooden nose and hot glue it in the center of the buffalo check and the faux fur on the bottom of the stocking. And here you can see our finished gnomes, our surprise mason jar gnomes we'll call them my daughter is going to remove the gnome here so you can see how they're filled with christmas candy but so cute and you can personalize them any way you would like for your gifts this next craft we're going to use a wide mouth mason jar we're going to start by applying several coats of chalk paint to the outside of the mason jar and I used a cream, you could also use white. Um, and the chalk paint is pretty good at sticking to anything, so I didn't apply any primer to this jar before I started painting, but you could use some sort of primer or a texture to make it more stick better. Um, but the chalk paint, like I mentioned, does stick pretty well just by going directly, painting directly on the glass. So that is what I did just for convenience. I just took a foam brush and brushed it all over the jar. And once you've covered the jar well with a chalk paint, then just take two black, two to three black buttons and just attach those into the center of one side of the mason jar. Next, you're gonna take a ribbon or some sort of trim and you're gonna make a scarf around your snowman and I did just use this red and white buffalo check trim and I just hot glued it around the rim of the mason jar and that is going to be our snowman scarf. I wanted the ends of my scarf to fall towards the front of the snowman so I actually just hot glued the two pieces hanging down and then I just took a little Christmas pick and I tied on some bells 
around the jar with some twine and just embellish my snowman. The last step is to put the mason jar lid onto the top of the snowman and it's painted black to kind of act as a snowman hat. And then I just stuffed some Christmas florals in the center of the jar and it just turned out so cute and reminiscent of a little snowman. One of my favorite things about Christmas are the lights that come up everywhere and I love adding little areas to my home with extra lighting for Christmas. So this next project is going to use three small mason jars and we're going to turn them into luminaries that spell out the word joy. And so to get started with this craft, you're going to want either some vinyl letters that you print off with your Cricut or that you purchase. I had these on hand, so I actually didn't even print them off. I just already had them available and I think I found them at Hobby Lobby. But I attached the J and the Y to the mason jar along with a snowflake for the center jar, which is acting like the O in the word joy. And I attached them onto the jar and then I just used a foam brush and Mod Podge and just secured the letters and the snowflake onto the jar. Once the letters had dried, then I just took my brush and my Mod Podge and I actually just did a second coat of the Mod Podge all around the jar. And I covered up the letters again and then I took my fake snow and I just sprinkled it all around the jar. To give the luminaries an even brighter shine, I did take some gold glitter and I just sprinkled it around the jars after having applied the Mod Pot. And this just gave it a little bit extra sheen and I really liked how the glitter added to the shininess of the jars. So you'll just repeat this same step for all three of your jars. Once the Mod Podge has completely dried along with the snow, then you're just going to take your vinyl and peel it off of your jar. And I did it on the J here and then I'll also do it on the Y and the Snowflake. And I did have a little bit diff of difficulty getting it off of the jars. Um, just to be completely honest, it was a little tricky not peeling off the um, snow that was hardened in between the different areas of the letters and the snowflake. So for the snowflake, I just took an X-Acto knife and just scraped it off as best I could. Once I had the joy cutouts on the jar, then I just embellished the jar. So I took twine and I took a little bit of yarn and I just tied it around the tops of the jars. Once the joy letters were complete, then I just embellished the jar with some pine cones and Christmas picks on the top of the jar with some hot glue. And I think that they turned out really cute. And again, these can be used for um, luminaries so to use little lights in the center of the jar they can also be used for floral arrangements you could put little floral greens in each of the jars the snowflake um, too much of the Mod Podge had fallen off so I decided to hot glue a little paper snowflake in the center of the jar and then on top of it that I put a little wooden snowflake and this was just to make clear the fact that it was a snowflake and I was very happy with how these luminaries turned out as well um, they're just warm and cozy and really add a cute dimension to my holiday decor now on this next craft we're going to be painting our jars in red white and green and what I did was just take the cream chalk paint and paint painted all the jars and then I took an acrylic paint and painted over the cream with red green and then obviously the cream I just left the way it was and then I applied some wax on top of the acrylic paint first of all the clear and then I did the dark 
antique wax and just gave it an antiquated look. Um, I just rubbed it all around until the jar was no longer waxy and that sealed the paint onto the jars. Once the jars were sealed and I started to embellish the jars, I just took um, a green floral link and I just put it around the top of each of the jars. And then I had some pretty cool black and white scrapbook paper from my sister-in-law that had um, different Christmas carols on it. And so I used that scrapbook paper around the center of each of the jars. And since I had three colors, red, white, and green, I did two of the jars in the white and the black, and then I did the other jar with the black and the white. And I just used a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. And then once the paper was secured on to the jar, then I took Mod Podge and I just worked to further um, seal the paper onto the jar. And again, just repeat that for the next two jars. Um, like I mentioned, I did two the same and I did one that was different so I could contrast with the other two jars and just attached it to the center of the jar. Then I cut off an extra piece of the contrasting scrapbook paper and I just put that in the inside of each of the jars. So whichever paper I had chosen for the outside, I used um, the different one on the inside and that created a really cool look for the jars and then I just hot glued um, the paper into place. After the paper had dried, then I took some red and white upholstery webbing. You could also use a ribbon for this, but I had this red and white webbing on hand and I thought it looked really cool with the black and white. So I just hot glued that on top of the paper in the center of each of the jars. The last thing I did was attach words in the center of the jars that remind me of um, the hope and the joy and the peace that Christ brings at Christmas. So I just hot glued those into the center of each of the jars. Now like a lot of these crafts, these jars can be used in a variety of ways. They can be used to hold gift cards or other gifts for people. They can use floral um, greens for Christmas. Um, since I have three daughters, I decided these three jars were going to be a treat jar for each of my children. And so I just took Christmas candy and I filled in each of the jars with their favorite candies. And then I closed them up with these really cool, I love them, antique covers. Um, my friend actually had a whole case of antique mason jars with lids. And I had a bunch of those on hand, so I just used those to cover up the jars. And then I just did a little bit more of embellishing the top of the jars with a jingle bell and a pine cone on a piece of twine and just tied that around the middle of the green on the top of the jar. And I just repeated it for each of the three jars. And here are my finished jars. I love the black and white contrasting colors of the words. I love how the words remind me of Christ and Christmas, and I just really like how they turned out, and I hope my daughters love them. Um, let me know what you'd use these jars for. This next craft is a pin cushion mason jar. So you're gonna start with a small, short mason jar, and you're gonna glue half of a styrofoam ball onto the top of a mason jar lid, and then you're gonna cover it with fabric and then hot glue the fabric onto the mason jar lid and then just trim around the lid to give you a nice little pin cushion on the top of the mason jar lid. And then all you do is just attach that lid back onto the jar. And then you have a cute little storage space below the jar to put thread, needles um, for sewing. And so this is a really cute little present for an aspiring seamstress or someone who likes sewing. Um, it's super easy and quick and just gives you a cute little present 
um, to give to someone who sews. So otherwise here is the finished pin cushion and I put some embroidery thread of different colors to match the fabric along with needles and a measuring tape and it's a perfect stocking stuff for a gift for someone who likes to sew. For this next craft, I made a nativity scene inside of the mason jar and there's instructions down below on how you can make the little wooden nativity scene. And all I did was cut out a circle the same size as the bottom of the mason jar and attach the little wooden set onto the felt. And then I glued it on the bottom of the jar and embellished it with Mod Podge, with glitter, fake snow, and then pine cones and stars around the top. And I spray painted the lid black and then attached some scrapbook paper on the lid. And this is my little nativity scene. And I accidentally deleted the video while I was recording it, so I don't have all the steps. But if you have any questions, just let me know. This next craft is a great craft if you have nice mason jars that you don't want to necessarily alter, but you want to use. These jars are for my friend and her grandmother had them back in 1919, I think. So I didn't really want to alter them at all. So you're actually going to take a sweater sleeve or I used these leg warmers that look kind of like sweater sleeves and just cover the mason jar with the sweater sleeve or leg warmer, whichever one you're using. And once you have it on the jar, then I just used the antique lid and closed it up. And then just take ribbon or trim and embellish the jar. And so I had this green vintage um, ribbon, which I really like. And I just tied a bow around the center of the jar. And you can use any color colors that match with your sweater. I liked how the green went with the gray. So I just tied a bow in the center of the jar. And then I took some frosted floral greens and just stuffed that in between the ribbon and the sweater. And then I used some dried oranges, which I had on hand, and some sleigh bells that were rusty. And I just attached those by punching a hole on each side of the orange and then feeding a piece of twine through the center of the orange. And then I just tied it on top of the ribbon around the jar and it looked really cute i thought that the orange added a nice little addition to the jar so you can embellish it with dried oranges or pine cones sleigh bells or anything that you like on your jars and these just make the jars really cute and festive for christmas and the jar itself actually if someone appreciates vintage looking jars um, is a present so you can fill it with Anything that you choose, you can do um, coffee or tea or nuts or candy, of course, or socks, gift cards, really anything that you can think of, you could put in the jar and the jar itself becomes like the wrapped present. And it's just a cute little thing to give to a family or friend. And I love how the sweater just makes it look warm and cozy for winter. So I just cut off the ribbon on the second jar and I had these salt ornaments on hand, which were really cute on top of the oranges. So I just added those and I have a tutorial below if you're interested in making those to embellish your jar. But otherwise, that was pretty much it to making these beautiful sweater cozy jars. Just makes them look fun and festive and dresses them up for Christmas. But then you can take all of the embellishments off and use the jar for something else as well. This next craft is making a girl gnome. We made the guy gnome earlier, so now we're gonna show you how to make a girl gnome. For this, I used a smaller mason jar and I just covered the jar with these bright pink socks that I found at the Dollar Tree. You can use any socks that you like. These ones kind of look a little bit more like Valentine's Day than Christmas, but I thought they were still kind of cheery and festive for Christmas, so I covered the mason jar with the sock. And then once you have your sock on the jar, then you can fill it with whatever you're using. I thought since these were gonna be a gnome set, it'd be cute to put self-care items in there and just say there's nobody like you or something to make a mom or someone feel special for Christmas. And so once the jars were covered, then I took the gnome hat pattern and that's down below as well. And I cut out the gnome hat and then I just sewed a seam along the triangle edge and there was my gnome hat. So I just filled a little bit of polyfill 
in the center of the hat and then it was ready to attach to the top of my gnome jar and these hats are going to be able to come on and off of the jar so you just want to be careful as you're gluing that you don't glue anything onto both the hat and the sock you want to keep the two parts separate so for girl gnomes one of the easiest way to make the braids is just to use this chunky braided yarn and just cut off a couple inches for a braid and then use a rubber band to tie off one of the ends so that the yarn doesn't unravel and then what we're going to do is just take this yarn and hot glue it on the underside of the hat so i just put a little bit of hot glue on the top of each of the braids and tucked it on the ins or underside of the hat. Now that your braids are attached, just take some hot glue and glue on your wooden gnome nose. And I did choose to stick mine onto the sock so the nose would stay on the sock when the hat is removed. And just hot glue it, hold it into place, and then you have your girl gnome. And that's really all there is to making these cute little mason jar girl gnomes that can be filled with candy or self-care items or anything that you choose. Um, as just a quick way to embellish the jar, I decided that the girl's hat could use a little bit of fluff around the bottom of her hat. So I just took this chunky light pink yarn and just made a little bit of um, a fur kind of rim to her hat. And the very last thing I did was take a little felt heart and I hot glued it on the corner of the gnome. And I planned to make the boy gnome to match, so I just took the beard, which there's a pattern below for that as well, and hot glued that onto the sock. Um, and then I put the nose also on the sock with hot glue. And then I had the base for the boy gnome. I used the same hat pattern to make a hat for my boy gnome and just attach the hat to the top of the mason jar after adding some polyfill inside. And then just made a matching little heart for the corner of his hat. Then I have my boy and girl gnomes and they are super cute. They look almost like Valentine gnomes, but they're cute for Christmas too. And then you can remove their hats and stuff it with whatever you want. And it's kind of a cute, little gift idea for a friend or a coworker and super easy to make. This next craft is not necessarily an original craft, but I still thought it was worth mentioning. Um, just making a candy cane mason jar by painting a mason jar with white chalk paint and then taking painter's tape and taking one side at a time, just making stripes that are diagonal across the jar. And I did find it easier to do it that way, just do the front of the jar first and then turn the jar over and do the back side versus trying to um, bring the tape all the way around. It didn't work as easily. So once I completed the front, then I kind of moved on to the back of the jar and just did the vertical, or not vertical, but diagonal stripes. Um, across the jar and once the tape was all in place then I took a red acrylic paint and then just painted over all the tape in the jar to make the red stripes in the candy cane and once the paint had dried completely then I just removed the painters tape gently from the jar and unfortunately the tape didn't remove or didn't keep the lines as straight as I would have liked. And so after removing all the painter's tape, I did just take a paintbrush and I touched up the different um, stripes with red and white paint just to give it as straight of a, a line as I could, could manage doing it freehand. Um, if you could use like a frog tape, that might work better than the painter's tape that I used. But I thought after I touched it up with the paintbrush, it did look okay. So I just went on to embellishing it and I just took these red pom-poms and hot glued them around the mouth of the mason jar and I just thought they added a little pop and made them the jar look a little bit more interesting. Um, so I embellished them with the pom-poms, but you can use whatever you want 
to embellish your jar or you can leave it as is and just put a red mason jar lid on. I was planning to use this jar for floral greens as a present, so I actually just used an additional ribbon around the mouth of the mason jar and I thought that the little red and white polka dot matched well and looked cute on there and just finished up the top of the jar. But like I said, you could just use a mason jar lid and close it up and fill it with however you um, would choose as well. This last craft is not necessarily a new one either, but it is a good one. Um, I just used this mason jar that was a spaghetti jar to make a cookie mix. So I just started by layering the ingredients um, one layer at a time in the jar. And the important thing is just to try to layer it so that the layers are distinct when you look at the side of the jar and that they don't mix too much with each other. Um, so probably the sugar is the one that moves, sugar and flour moves around the most. Um, and so just trying to put them at different levels of the layers so that they don't mix too much with the other ingredients. But just layer the ingredients in there and you can use the recipe down below that I used for my jar. And there's also little printables that you can print out the instructions on what wet ingredients to add and what to cook, cook the cookies at and all that fun stuff. Um, but you could also choose to use um, pre-packaged things like cookies or pancake mix and then just create layers with chocolate chips or white chocolate chips or whatever you want. And so once I had my layers and my cookie mix, then I just took the top of the mason jar lid and attached a piece of scrapbook paper and then I, I just attached it back to the jar. And then the last thing I like to do is just embellish the jar a little bit. So I took a floral green and just twisted it around the jar and then added some berries and sleigh bells and this little wooden um, tag. Also, you can put someone's name on there and then just tied it around the outside of the jar. And here is a completed mason jar cookie mix. It looks nice and festive and a perfect gift to give to someone. And let's take a look at all of our mason jars one more time. You can see all the different varieties of jars that you can make. Um, it's really amazing how you can just take these mason jars that you have around your home or that you use for cooking and just turn them into these beautiful um, gifts or decor for Christmas and I really like how these jars turned out I would love to hear which one is your favorite down below or which one you'll be trying or if you've already tried some which ones do you like to make the most I love hearing from you it's fun to do crafts together and I love hearing what your favorite are and what you're doing as well so say goodbye to our gnomes and thank you so much for watching I hope you stick around and if you liked this video feel free to hit that subscribe button so we can continue crafting together. Otherwise, Merry Christmas and thanks for being here.